and welcome to the first tutorial here at Nikki Hart Digital Art. Uh, today we're going to talk about an artist dilemma. These will be featured episodes throughout the coming weeks that tackle a specific dilemma that artists face. However, these techniques can definitely be used in other ways and you don't have to be an artist to learn from them, but they will be geared towards the artist community. All right, so let's get started. What is the dilemma today? Well, the dilemma is a magazine has called you and they would like you to submit your artwork for their publication. They've specified that they don't know whether it'll be on the cover, but they definitely would like to highlight you in some way. So it's up to you to provide them with that image. So today I'm going to walk you through taking an image and formatting it for that specific situation and some of the areas that you need to pay attention to so that you're making sure to put the best image into the magazine that you possibly can. Now, as I noted, it's not known whether it'll be on the cover or whether it'll just be inside in a feature article. If this is the case, you want to try to shoot higher with your image size. So we're going to talk about that too, so that you kind of format it so that they can use it in a variety of ways since they weren't specific. This may happen where you need to format an image for print, but you really don't know what the end result will be, how big it will be, how small it will be. So the best that you can do is format this image for a variety of situations. So let's get started. All of my work is created on the computer, so it's already digital, which makes it a lot easier when I need to format it for different situations. However, this technique can be used for a photograph of your image. Just make sure that it's the biggest image that your camera could possibly take at at least 300 dpi, and you should be fine. All right, so I have my image here. My image was originally created at 15 by 20 at 300 dpi. This is pretty large. I can go ahead and send this off to the printer at this size and the magazine will probably be able to use it for their print job. However, I'm going to show you two other sizes that also work for print and the size that you definitely do not want to go below is a 5 by 7. So 5 by 7 and above is the size that you want to stick with. <clears throat> and depending on the actual size and proportion of your image, the numbers that I give you may not be exact, and that's okay. But I'm just giving you a 5 by 7 to go on so you know where you need to kind of hit with the size when you're formatting your image. So definitely want to keep this resolution at 300. If it dips below that, it's too low of a resolution for print. If you pull something off the web, you'll see that that's most likely at a 72 DPI. That is definitely not a print quality. So we want to make sure that this is 300 originally. And I will show you at the end of this tutorial what happens if I have an original image at 72 DPI and I want to force it to be 300. It can be done, but the results are not pretty. So I have this 15 by 20. We can change it to a 5 by 7 if I type 5. And because my image isn't exactly proportionate to that, it's just a hair shy of 7. So if that's your case, that's OK. Uh, so this size is OK. But our dilemma was that it was not specified whether or not it was going to be used on the cover. So if it's going to be used on the cover, we want to shoot a little bit higher. So I'm going to make this image an 8 by 10. And if this magazine cover is bigger, then you're going to need to take that into account. This is a standard, uh, just like a kind of around an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper size. So keep that in mind uh, for your specific situation. So I went ahead and changed that, kept this at 300, and I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to take it down in size just a little bit, but if I zoom in to 100% here, it still looks very nice. Here's 100%, and it still looks nice. Okay. So now we need to save this. There's two file formats that are acceptable when thinking of saving for print. JPEG is OK because it's very nice to email it. However, it is a compressed file, so the quality will degrade over time. So think about that. You can help that along by saving it a high qual at the highest quality that JPEG allows. However, know that it's still compressed, so while it's small and nice to email, the quality may go down. However, in this situation, we'll be okay because we have a pretty big image to begin with, and I'll show you how to save that JPEG to try to retain as much quality as possible. 
The other option is a TIFF, and TIFFs are becoming more and more popular because of their lossless quality, which means that they are uncompressed, and they keep that original quality of your image. However, because of that, they are also larger files, and sometimes they're not acceptable for emailing. So you'll have to take your situation and see what is acceptable. Either formats will work. So don't feel like because you can't email the TIFF because it's too large that a JPEG may not work. If all else fails, consult the person that contacted you and ask them what they prefer. And then you can format accordingly. So if we're going to save this as a JPEG, I'm going to go to File, Save As. Quick note here, to save a lot of time on the magazine's end, do them a favor and take a little time to name your file. A lot of times I'll get images from artists and it's like DS1005, a you know, from the camera that was used to take the photo. And I don't know who the artist is and I don't know what the name of the piece is. So I have to format that on my end, but it helps a lot if you do it on yours. Just a standard format here is the name of the piece, which I have here. And I like to put an underscore to separate the name of the piece and the title. This is just my standard. Um, and then I put my name at the end. So if this file ends up somewhere separate from your email, they know that it's what the name of the piece is and who the artist is regardless of what accompanies it. So it's very important. And then we're going to go here and pick JPEG. If you want to save it as a TIFF, that's here at the bottom. But we're going to hit JPEG and we're going to hit save. And this file already exists for me, so I'm just going to hit OK. And here's where you want to make sure that this is set to maximum and that this is at the highest too. This ensures that your JPEG is at the highest compression possible. However, it's still compressing it. It'll keep it at a very nice quality, as close to the original quality as possible. So if I hit OK, it will save. And in my files here. I have a ready to print. This is where I keep all of these images that I format that are ready to go. It's right here and you can see that it's titled correctly and it's ready to email or save to a CD to send off. And it is saved at a file size that is appropriate for emailing. It's still quite large but most email clients should handle it. Okay so what happens if I want to take a small image Okay, this one I have formatted so that you can see what happens if you force a small image to be large. This is only 200 pixels by 267 pixels, which is roughly around 3 inches. That's not a very big image. And it's also at 72 dpi, which is also not a very big image. So if I'm going to go in here and take the tip that I gave you today and force this to be 300 and I'm going to force this to be an 8 by 10, hit OK. And I'll scroll down here and you'll see this is extremely blurry. Here's my original image at 100%. Here's my small image forced to be large at 100%. There's a lot of difference in the quality, right? This one is extremely blurry. This one is very crisp and you can see details. This is what happens when you take a small image and force it to be big. It's You're able to do it, but it greatly degrades the quality of your image. That's something you just don't want to put out there, especially if it's going to be on the cover. You want that to be crisp and clean, just like this image. So that's what happens when you take a 72 DPI or a small image and try to make it big. This is why you need to work from big to small. So make sure that those source files that you're using to apply these techniques are large to begin with and you'll avoid that very unflattering blurry quality to your image. Please leave comments below. Also leave comments below if you have questions that you would like me to answer in upcoming tutorials. You can also email those to ideas at NikkiHeart.com and I will do my best to feature those in upcoming tutorials. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Thank you.